it's your girl Segan and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm actually going to be showing you guys how to make Kitcha Fit Fit. So Kitcha Fit Fit is a common Eritrean, Ethiopian dish that we we really have during breakfast, but from the comments from my mukbang that I had with my cousins Timbeet and Heaven, a lot of you guys were telling me that you guys eat it for dinner, for lunch. It's my favorite Eritrean breakfast, so I want to show you guys how to make it because I made a video on how I make really delicious tacos and a bunch of you guys actually sent me DMs on how you guys make your tacos after watching my videos. So I'm actually really, really excited to show you guys how to make it's a fit fit. With that being said though, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Just subscribe. It is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Once you click that bell notification, let me know in the comments below that you've done it so that I can give you guys a shout out. So I don't have any shout outs in this video because none of you guys did it. So in this video, please click that bell. Let me know in the comment section below. Tell me done with the bell icon or however you want to let me know that you did it and I'll give you guys a shout out in my next video. All right guys, so with that being said, let's get started with today's video. I'm actually super excited for this one. <laughs> so, ah. So we're back in the kitchen. So just a bit of a disclaimer. This is how I make Kitcha Fit Fit. I've been making Kitcha Fit Fit since I was, uh, I wanna say 12. I've been making Kitcha, so the kind of bread part of it, I've been making since I was 12. I had burnt marks still scarred on my arms. <laughs> like I said, this is my favorite breakfast and my fiance really loves Kitch a Fit Fit as well. So we're a Kitch a Fit Fit family. A lot of you guys do like gaats, so I'm gonna be incorporating gaats in this channel as well. So stay tuned for that. But in today's video, let's start making Kitch a Fit Fit. All right, so behind me, I have all the ingredients that we're gonna be using today. Kitch is probably like the easiest thing. All you need is three ingredients and to be honest, the third ingredient is really, really optional. So you have the flour. Um, I do have a measuring cup here, but this is not something I really do. I'm just doing it for the purpose of, if you guys wanna try this recipe, then you guys can. I have a mixing bowl. I have water. And the third option is salt. I don't necessarily like to cook with too much salt myself, but I will be adding a pinch of salt to the Kitcha Fit Fit. So it's entirely up to you how you guys like your Kitcha Fit Fit but it's mainly flour and water and you mix it up. But the only thing with making the kitcha is the consistency. You gotta make sure that the consistency is good, not too watery and not too, too thick. So we're gonna be doing that together. But <laughs> in order to make this, you're, it's not necessarily a regular schmegular pan that you're gonna need. In Turinia, we call it a mogogo. I don't live at home anymore, so I don't have a mogogo. And to be honest, I had to do a little bit of a DIY mogogo. So if you guys are living solo dolo and you guys need to kind of improvise um, <laughs> with our cultural you know, tools, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna be using as a DIY mogogo. <laughs> right here, I have a nonstick skillet. And this cost me about like 11 bucks. I think after taxes around like $13 at Walmart. It's, I think, eight inches. You can get it much bigger if you'd like, but my burners are about uh, 10 inches, so I had to get something that could fit. And for my lid, I just took one of the lids from my other pots, and this is my mogogo. So for those of you guys that don't know what a mogogo is, also mogogo is like really fun to say, um, I'm gonna insert a picture right over here for you guys. It's pretty much a nonstick skillet but circular. The main use of it is to make taita or injera um, but again I don't have it so that's what I'm using. So without further ado let's get started with mixing and making the kitcha part of kitcha fit fit. <laughs> so with making kitcha fit fit you have got to make sure your hands are clean. That's rule number one. So this is the flour that I primarily use. Depending on where you guys are from, if you're from Europe or in the States, you guys may or may not have Golden Temple, but this is what I use for making gacha. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, they didn't have a smaller bag, so I had to walk out with this big bag. So I'm gonna be making a small portion for tonight, and I'm going to take one cup of flour, and we're gonna see if one cup of flour is enough. 
So this is about a cup of flour. Um, I'm going to do two cups of flour then. So with this amount, with two cups of flour, this is probably gonna make us two kichas using the size skillet that I have. If I was living at home and my mom's mokogo is ginormous, so this would have made just one giant kicha. But for our DIY mokogo, I'm only gonna be making two. So like I said, salt is an option. It's up to you, but I'm just gonna be adding a pinch for taste. What I like to do is, I like to keep this hand free. So I like to mix with one hand, and I like to pour water with the other hand. So I'm just going to take our water here, and I'm going to mix it. And I'm only adding a little bit at a time, because like I said earlier, you want that consistency to be really, really good. You don't want um, like big pockets or big patches of flour. You wanna make sure everything is thoroughly mixed. So also with the water, I'm not necessarily measuring it out. I'm just pretty much eyeballing the water because I'm looking for consistency above everything. Okay, so once it's like this, it's not at the consistency that I prefer. I'm just gonna need to add just a little bit of water and we're pretty much almost done because you don't want it as thin and as liquidy as pancake mix, but you want it much thicker so that it's not too runny. It's actually, this is a pretty good consistency, but you gotta make sure you're putting in that work, to be honest, um, and making sure it's getting mixed in and there's no lumps that's what i want to say there's no giant lumps of flour so you want to make sure you are smoothing everything out despite the fact that it's really thick how many times have i said thick already holy smokes and if it sticks to your hand it's okay i'm going to show you guys a, a a trick that i use um when it comes to getting the mix out of your hand so like i said i'm just going to add just a tiny bit of water tiny bit of water and we're pretty much done. This is literally how you make the base, which is Kitcha Fit Fit. Kitcha Fit Fit almost looks like a giant pancake, to be honest, but it doesn't taste like a pancake at all. <laughs> it almost looks like a cookie. When friends used to come over and my mom used to make it, they thought it was like a ginormous cookie, but the minute they tasted it, <laughs> they soon found out it wasn't a cookie. <laughs> This is kind of awkward, but as I'm mixing this, I'm actually gonna turn on the stove and put it at a medium. I made the mistake of putting it at medium high and I ended up burning the kitcha. So what I'm gonna do now is just put it at medium and then wait for it to heat up. This is the consistency that you want. And again, I use two cups of flour for this. And remember, one hand is free. It's so important because I mean, it's fun. And if you wanna get your kids involved, I guess you could like, put in two hands, but you gotta, cleanliness is next to godliness, you feel me? So just keep one hand clean in case you need to reach for things, you know? Okay, so we're at a point right now where our mix is not lumpy, it's ready to go, it is smooth, and our mogogo back here is at perfect temperature to place the kitcha and make the kitcha. So I'm really excited to show you guys this. So I'm gonna move you guys a little bit closer. So I'm gonna show you guys a trick of how to get this mixture off your hands and make sure you're smoothing out the kitcha really nicely. Before I forget, I wanna make mention that this in itself is vegan. So I have this a lot, I'm not vegan by any means, However, I do have this a lot with my family when we are like, you know, fasting for Easter and things of that nature. But if you happen to be vegan or you know somebody that's vegan, kitcha is like the perfect snack <laughs> if you're vegan. Um, so yeah, so let's get, let's get into it. 
All right, so what you wanna do is, before you even put it on the skillet, you wanna make sure you still have water on deck because when you spread it, because of the consistency, it's just gonna stick to your hand. So you're gonna have to dip your hand in water. So that's why I still have my water here. I'm gonna dip my hand in water, that way it doesn't stick to my hand and it'll go on smoothly. So again, with this mixture, because of the size of my skillet, um, again, if you guys have a larger one, then you guys would be good to do this all at once. I'm just gonna do half of this on it. So, I'm just gonna guesstimate, plop it on, and you're gonna hear that little bit of sizzle. Ooh! Okay, so you guys are gonna see what I mean. You see how it's following my hand? This is where you're gonna need to dip your hand into some water and make sure and make sure that you're spreading it out evenly because it will stick, okay? So it's looking good. Before I put on the lid, I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Again, I put it on medium heat. You don't need anything higher or lower than that because you don't wanna burn it. I'm gonna let it do its thing. I still have one more out of this. So I'm gonna let it kind of cook and then I'm gonna put the lid on. So we'll be right back. <laughs> so as you can see, it's completely kind of changed into this brown, this light brown sandy color. So I'm just gonna lift up this lid. And I'm just gonna check the bottom of it. Now, typically you would use a, what's called a mesh effet, and I've used it in my um, makeup tutorials where I kind of fan out my face after I you know, set, set it with a setting spray. However, because I use that for makeup, I don't have an extra one, so I'm gonna be using a fork to flip it. Um, and I'm just gonna check the bottom and I don't know if you guys could tell, you have to be very, very careful. Again, I've been doing this for a very long time, so <laughs> um, if you guys are pretty sensitive to this, then I wouldn't, I would caution you to use a mesh effet that to help you flip it. So what I'm gonna do is, it's looking pretty good and pretty cooked on this side, as you guys can tell. That's really hot, <laughs> but I got these Habesha fingers, I got these Habesha hands. So I'm just gonna press it down just a little bit. So I'm gonna let it cook on this side and I'm gonna cover it again with the lid. And we're gonna wait until the other side is cooked. Now it's time to flip. So I'm gonna flip this and this is what it should look like. Oh, this is really hot. So yeah. So this is what it should look like on this side and on this side. You guys can probably tell how small it is um, compared to if you guys make this at home. But my skillet, like I said, is a DIY. We're improvising, we're uh, you know being innovative. Uh, so I'm gonna let this sit on the side and let it cool and then I'm gonna do the other one. Okay. This is gonna be like a mini, mini, mini one because they're already small to begin with, right? So I have my itch right here that's been cooling off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to break it off and start breaking them into little pieces. So I know some people have a food processor um, and kind of break this into big chunks and then have the food processor chop it up, but your girl don't got a food processor, so she's doing it old school way, pretty much ripping them into pieces and putting them in the pot. <laughs> so for those of you guys that have like younger kids, I remember when my mom would make this, um, because I wasn't allowed to make it, she would let me do this part. 
like she would let me break it up into pieces and this is something fun if you guys have younger kids that you still want to kind of like involve in the kitchen like get your son get your daughter to do this and it's 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 kind of fun but let's be real to be honest like i'll take a i'll take this entire thing and just eat it and <laughs> i don't need any like bebere or butter um in it this is my favorite thing to have with shahi which is tea i'm just like my mouth is salivating already but yes we're almost done. We're just breaking them. Breaking them into little chunks like this. I'm probably gonna speed up this process to be honest because it's just breaking them into little pieces. So just to give you guys a heads up, this is what the second one's looking like. And I'm just gonna wait for this one to finish cooking and then I'm gonna let this one cool down and add it to the batch. All right guys, so we're at pretty much our final step. If you guys hear any noise in the background, I apologize. We're just doing laundry right now. So behind me, I have Bebere, and I also have Esme. So this is uh, pretty much our butter that we make at home. I didn't make it, my mom actually set me up with both uh, when I moved out. So she gave me a jar of Bebere and a jar of Esme, and as you can tell, I probably need some more of both. Um, but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna add Esme and the Bebere to the pot of Kicha. Because what I like to do is I like to make sure that every single piece is oozing and like incorporated with just Esme and Bebere goodness. Cause that's where, that's where that flavor is gonna like, you know? So that's what I'm gonna show you guys next. I pretty much eyeball the Esme and the Bebere. It's up to your liking. If you guys don't know what Bebere is, it's a really, really spicy uh, spice, if you will. <laughs> so Bebere is really, really spicy. So it's up to you how much spice you wanna incorporate in your Kitchen Fit Fit. We like a lot of spice, so I'm gonna put a lot. <laughs> and same goes for the Esme. Yeah, it's up to your discretion. There's not really measurements that happen. <laughs> Okay, so let me give you guys a closer look of what I'm gonna be doing. So let's keep in mind that the kitcha is pretty warm. So I'm gonna put it not on a high heat, I'm actually gonna put it on a super, super low heat. That way it's still warm and it will melt the tesmi in each and every individual piece of kitcha. Oh, that's the smell. I don't know what it is, but the smell of Esme reminds me of my childhood. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. So I added, I'm just gonna add a couple teaspoons. So I added in the Esme to the pot of Kitcha, and I'm just taking a wooden spoon and incorporating all of that Esme goodness into the Kitcha. So next, I'm gonna add the bebere. So like I said, it's entirely up to you how spicy you want it. We like it really spicy, so I'm gonna add a bit of bebere to this. Oh, the smell of bebere. Oh, it's looking good. It is looking good. You gotta make sure that you get even the bottom so that every individual piece is, whew, the smell is actually amazing. The smell does not bother me. I mean, back in the day, if I smelled like Esme, especially after like a weekend of my mom making it, yeah, like sure, I was getting made fun of, but my food still tastes good. It's flavor. Ain't nothing to be ashamed about. Oh. Look at that. I know you see it. Look at this. Look at this. So I'm gonna just taste one for, you know, for measure. I'm just gonna try one. tasting beautifully right now. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of bebere, because I mean, you can't go wrong with a little bit of bebere. 
but <laughs> oh my god Ooh -wee. I might just add a little bit of test me too cuz I'm feeling good Ain't nothing wrong with that me. Ain't nothing wrong with that me. <laughs> Not only does it look amazing, I'm telling you guys, it tastes amazing. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the heat, and we're ready to eat. Oh, that rhymes. I'm gonna turn off the heat because we're ready to eat. Can I get like something? Can I get like a, yay, woo -hoo. All right. So we are done. We're ready to finally plate. And what I personally like to do is I like to get some yogurt and add just a dollop of yogurt, especially if it's really spicy or if you guys don't really do spice, then the yogurt will cool down your palate. So I'm just gonna add one dollop of yogurt right there. Look how cute, I did that. All right guys, so this is the finished product. Oh my God, let me just have a little taste. A little bit of yogurt. My mouth is watering. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, yes. That's all I have to say. Like, so I'm gonna stop eating because I'll I'll literally inhale this entire thing. But this is pretty much the finished product. So I did mention earlier in this video when I was making the kitchen itself that it was completely vegan. All I did was add water, flour, and a pinch of salt. So there was no egg incorporated in it at all. But because we use tesame, which is butter, you can always substitute the butter with olive oil, which still makes it vegan and obviously not have the yogurt. So, I mean, just take one more bite. Or two more bites. Oh my god. <laughs> Another thing, just so that you guys know, I did mention this in the mukbang video. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. You can always make a batch of this like as you probably could tell earlier when i was plating the kitchen fit fit i still had some left over so you can always refrigerate this or even freeze it if you want and then take it in batches so you can have it every morning so it's almost like a meal prep if you want to kind of make things in bulk and not worry about breakfast and also if you have like a lot of guests kitchen fit fit comes in clutch because you don't have to worry about preparing like a whole big feast every single morning. People can just take out a container of Fit Fit, some yogurt, make a nice cup of tea, nice spicy tea, and there you have it. That's pretty much, that's, that's breakfast. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already, please subscribe, join the Sega Mizgina family. If you guys want a shout out, click that bell notification. Let me know in the comment section down below that you've done it by typing in done with the bell 
it would let me know that you guys have done it. That way I could give you guys a shout out in my next video. If you guys know anybody that loves Kitcha Fit Fit, share this video with them. It's super easy to make, it's not complicated at all, and if you're like me, this is what I grew up on, so I'm just happy that I could now make it anytime I want at home. Um, and if you guys don't have a Mogogo, that's not a problem. I made a makeshift Mogogo, and it cost me less than $20, so. My voice isn't still back yet, but it's getting a little bit better. Thanks to everybody in my last video that was telling me what to do to get my voice back. It's slowly coming back, but a bunch of you guys actually liked it. So, I mean, eh, whatever. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and now Snapchat for more content. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in my next video. I love you guys so, so much. You guys have no idea your subscription, your support means the world to me. Stay beautiful, stay positive, stay blessed, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah. Oh my god. This is so good. Ooh, I gotta do a thumbnail.